Um, following worship this morning, we're just going to take a moment for any of you that want to stick around. Um, this week, the governor is lifting some of the uh, COVID restrictions, including face masks in uh, churches and so forth. So we're, uh, church council will be uh, um, talking about some of those things uh, a week from Wednesday. And uh, so, I mean, you can expect that some things will be changing, but we wanted you to have an opportunity just to share with us kind of, kind of where you're at right now in terms of this transition point. And um, as we've come through, uh, you know, two years um, with dealing with COVID and, and uh, just to help us to have a sense of where you are at uh, emotionally as we've all had to deal with losses uh, throughout this time, uh, uh, certainly just in, in terms of activity and those kinds of things. So anybody that wants to stick around after worship, you're welcome to, to do that. And then um, uh, we'll certainly pass those along to the uh, church council as they uh, uh, do their deliberations in terms of uh, next steps for us here. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We join in a Lenten dialogue. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and the sake of the gospel will save it. Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever will be. Amen. God of new life, as Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, renew and restore us to new life, leaving behind in the grave all that prevents us from loving you fully, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our gospel reading this morning from the 11th chapter of John. The reading for this first Sunday in Lent is from John's Gospel, the 11th chapter. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother at Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our, friends, La our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. 
When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went with him. Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When Jesus saw Mary weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in the spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of our Lord. Well, today we encounter this uh, beautiful story of uh, Lazarus, uh, a long reading. Uh, we left out some verses, but it's the whole 11th chapter of John. Um, and primarily it begins, of course, with Jesus receiving news that his good friend Lazarus is ill, and his sisters Mary and Martha send word to Jesus, He whom you love is ill. And admittedly, we don't understand why Jesus tarries before going to see Lazarus and his sisters. Jesus says, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. And then John's Gospel records these words, Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Now, many biblical scholars uh, suggest that this story of the raising of Lazarus is the seventh uh, sign in the uh, Gospel of John. John's Gospel, all about these signs or miracles uh, that are intended to lead people uh, to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ. Signs that lead to faith. As it says in the 20th chapter of John, that believing we may have life in his name. Now these seven signs are seen by many scholars and theologians as evidence of the new creation theology that is uh, within John's gospel. Evidence of this understanding going all the way back to the fall into sin in Genesis. That God's mission throughout uh, the biblical narrative is about bringing all of creation back into relationship with God. And the resurrection of Jesus at the end of John's gospel, some see as the implied eighth sign or as in, in another way of saying, the eighth day of creation, following the seven uh, 
days of symbolic days of creation back in Genesis, uh, God's new creation begun through Jesus' death and resurrection, the beginning of this new creation that we are joined into through baptism as we are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into the power of Christ's death and resurrection for us in water and word. Being born from above, as we heard in the story back in chapter 3 with Nicodemus. Still, this story of the raising of Lazarus can be troubling for us, as both Martha and Mary give voice to that when they say to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I'm quite sure that I've uh, shared with you already that uh, it was almost uh, 30 years ago now that my dad died suddenly of a heart attack on a Friday night. And this was the gospel reading that Sunday morning as my wife and I accompanied my mom to worship that Sunday. And in the midst of deep grief and questions that Sunday came these words. Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. Lord, if you had been there, my dad would not have died. But also in that moment, knowing that my dad was not coming back, that death is real. As real as it is for anyone who has experienced that kind of loss, as real as it is in real time today in places like Ukraine, What is the reality of where God meets us in these moments? Jesus said to Martha, your brother will rise again. And Martha responded in the orthodox understanding of the faith of her day. I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And then Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection, and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. John's gospel is the gospel that helps us to realize that resurrection life is not just for when we die. It is not a hope for just the last day. It is not a hope for heaven after we live. But John's gospel helps us to live into the reality that even now, even today, we participate in Christ's eternal life at work within us. That even in the darkness of this day, even in the darkness of senseless things, reading in the paper this morning of the real reality of mothers mourning the loss of their children in war, even in the tyranny of those who use power and privilege to selfish ends, there is even now eternal life that is active within us through this one who is the resurrection and the life, through the promise given that those who live and believe in him will never die. God's work is all about bringing new life, new hope, into the very presence of death at work among us to offer the possibility of transformation to new places of life and living on the other side of experiences of death. As indeed St. Paul says in Romans, all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. This world continues to do its best to suck life out of us. Our own 
sinful behaviors lead us to trust sources that can never truly deliver life. The broken promises of this world still create places of injustice and despair that only lead to war and rumors of war that lead only to more hurt and suffering and bondage. It's into these places that Christ goes and has gone before us. When Jesus asks, where have you laid him? They said to him, come and see. Earlier in John's gospel, those same words have been used as a call for people to come and see Jesus. But now it is Jesus himself who is invited into the very presence of death to come and see. To enter into the very reality of the death of his friend Lazarus. And filled with emotion, Jesus wept. But then Jesus says something that none of us can say. Lazarus, come out. This one who is the resurrection and the life calls into the stench of death and says, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face covered in cloth. And Jesus says, unbind him and let him go. Among us today, Jesus' glory is revealed and faith is nurtured for us, not so often through the dead being restored to life, but through being present for one another with patience and fierce love in the midst of injustice and grief. To stand where Christ stands and says, come out. We are God's people called to embrace and meet people in the places of death because we also have stood there. And we have come to trust the promise that the power of Christ's life is alive in us. And we trust that there can indeed be the hope of new beginnings on the other side of those experiences of death. We are to be those to whom Jesus says today, unbind them and let them go. We are to be the community that can stare the reality of death in the face and still speak a word of hope because we share life in the one who is the resurrection and the life. And that life that God gives is already present in us and through us for the sake of this world that God so loves. In Jesus' name, amen. We join in our prayers. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Each petition ends with the words, merciful God, and you are invited to respond, receive our prayer. We pray for the church, sharpen its proclamation of the world so that your people learn to reject the voices of deception and distraction. Strengthen all who are tempted to believe lies about themselves or others. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. We pray for the earth and all its creatures. Protect the wilderness places and all plants and animal species that call them home. Sustain farmers and all laborers who work the land and harvest the fruits of its abundance. Merciful God, receive our prayer. 
We pray for the nations of the world, and especially in these days for Ukraine. Awaken elected leaders and government officials to work for the ways that lead to peace, economic justice, and against the tyranny of war. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those in need, rescue those experiencing mental illness or contending with addiction. Please ease the anxiety of those who live with dementia. Command your angels concerning all who are sick. Move us into possibilities beyond this COVID pandemic. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks for those who have died. Gather them with all the saints into your heavenly dwelling place. Encourage us with the promise that all who call upon your name are saved. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Merciful Lord, we present before you all those listed in our prayer concerns and celebrations. And now in this moment of silence, we name before you those whom you have specifically placed upon our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Gracious Father, we ask your blessing to uh, be with Matthew as he awaits uh, being able to uh, come home from a business trip to Denmark, uh, following with an exposure and, and mild case of COVID. Um, grant him uh, safety in the journey and a good homecoming with family. Lord, we uh, pray for Dan Potoshnik, who had uh, surgery on Friday, and pray that you uh, strengthen and uh, give him good recovery. And Lord, we uh, pray your blessing upon uh, our discussions as we anticipate uh, uh, transition uh, in this time of COVID. And Lord, help us to uh, uh, be wise in, in the ways in which we are able to, to move forward. Uh, thank you, Lord, for uh, your faithfulness with us ways that you have shown us uh, that we have been, been able to be innovative and continue in the difficulty of this time of pandemic. And Lord, we, uh, of course, give our attention to uh, places of, of war in our world today, especially even now as war rages in Ukraine and uh, people are fleeing, cities are being shelled, lives are being lost, parents are being bereaved. So Lord, again, we pray for your spirit to work among those who have been given authority to act on behalf of nations, to work for the ways of peace. For all these things and whatever else that you see that we have need of, we come imploring through your mercy and your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's stand and extend that greeting. So just while we take just a momentary break here, this is just a, a, a listing of some of those tasks that um, we have for Vacation Bible School that will really help uh, alleviate some of the stress um, on our education uh, committee, especially in organization. Um, can help with registration, uh, organize and carry out uh, uh, music and t-shirt distribution, uh, make name tags for students, uh, and uh, set up classroom uh, the week before VBS, uh, add children's names on craft bags and sit-upons, label and laminate car tags for pickup and drop-off, uh, supplies and a laminating machine are available here at church, 
pick up Starbucks appreciation treats for staff on Wednesday afternoon for distribution after pickup, create decorations, and uh, these will, costs will be covered uh, by the church. And also we have parking lot attendants, youth and adult crew leaders, Bible adventure leaders, game site leader, craft leaders, worship leaders. Okay, so take a look at the neat display uh, that is out there in the entryway. The Lord be with you. Lift your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.